Oh, first, I'd like to say there's nothing that makes me happier than having my work shown in public spaces and at student union galleries. It couldn't be better. I like it to be in casual places where people can walk by and then go, oh, ow, ooh. Um, and I like my work to tell stories. I am a storyteller, I think. The things I'm experiencing, I do my best to present them to others and um, try to choose themes that move me and feel need visibility. So, uh, Vigrant's Borderlands and Social Justice, uh, so glad that you have the sketches for one thing and then color photographs of um, the places in Arizona and Mexico. And then, um, most of all, reproductions of the panels that I did. So now you really, really get to see the panels. And I'm just so happy to be present there and uh, to share my story. Thank you so much. So now you're seeing the originals. And Peg Bowden, who was the person we stayed with, and she was our guide. And uh, this was at her house, at her window, for everyone to see. And uh, this wonderful woman, uh, Jane Story, who was uh, with us and uh, took us to Nogales and took us to uh, Douglas, Arizona, where we saw the cross, the cross planting. And these are migrants. The line was enormous. I just chose a tiny group of, of three, four that I could handle, but an enormous line waiting to eat. So this, this is a, 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 a lunch place, a breakfast place, where the Samaritans contribute their work, their labor, uh, but also it feeds maybe 250 Samar uh, migrants waiting to cross the border every day and sometimes a double session. And this is what the Commodore, El Commodore, the feeding station looks like. Long, long tables. A uh, big painting up above of the Last Supper. And, but the Last Supper is made of migrant faces, migrant people, just like these folks are, who are listening to the nun. And she's telling them, no more deaths. Make sure when you're crossing the border, take enough water with you. Because she knows the reality of how many thousands of people die in the desert. And perhaps a simpler drawing to, to see uh, the, the humbleness of people and the prayer and the listening to the nuns and the nuns' advice before they begin to eat. And it's a hearty meal, and it may be their very last, last hearty meal for a long time. And waiting for immigration to make decisions. And this is how people live. I drew a little transparent sheet of plastic uh, on the street. And uh, this is an example of one, but hundreds and hundreds. And this is a, a, a lucky family who has uh, achieved the right to be in this particular room um, of, the home, of Homeland Security where they are going to be considered uh, to cross legally. And wonderful people who care. Um, Panchito, um, a medic, um, who would be available day and night, actually, to help the migrants with whatever he could, whatever their needs were. And uh, driving on the Arizona side and listening to how many thousands of people have been buried in the desert there, so I added the crosses. They're not in a group like that, but I did eventually see and experience what it was like. And um, this is right before we went as a group into the desert to plant a cross to honor uh, a person who lost their life. And um, he feels that the 
earth, the soil, is filled with DNA of real people. It's alive and we need to honor. And I think one of the more powerful sketches I did um, of the actual planting of the cross, the little ceremony of people, um, uh, the incense, the little offerings, and the caring, the caring about U.S. policy, what causes these migrants to cross with desperateness, and how we need to keep fighting this to see what we can do. And the little child whose remains were found Uh, I think this is the last one. This is another area of the desert that's an indigenous area because I was learning that um, there's also uh, Native American tribal people who own land nearby and uh, who are also you know, experiencing uh, the whole thing of, oh no, here is my wall. Here is my actual wall, um, except uh, for um, um, other drawings, I, I uh, simplified the background, but this is what the horrible wiring looks like. I'm, I'm very thankful for Africa World Press that published this book, Migrants, Borderlands, and Social Justice, that has all the drawings that you've just seen, all the panels that are in the studio, and it also has earlier work that led me to follow my interest uh, and to pursue this whole thing of migrants. Um, uh, and so on. So it, it, it has some of that history in it. And it starts with um, um, my work. My work right here in Oregon um, of the farm workers um, in Southern Oregon and uh, the harvesting of pears, of grapes. Um, and you can see my sketches once again. So the sketchbook is the basis of what I do and how I do my work. And then come the panels. And uh, the panels, once again, are the movements. Uh, they're not copies, but they're re-seen and re-felt via plywood, via the cutting and the carving and the painting. And um, after spending six years of just doing a series of 75 panels, uh, this is a summary of a few of the major panels. And I'm so proud that um, the Oregon State Capitol actually has um, uh, my work, and I'll show you in a moment, but here is a photograph of the 26 panels that are in the Medford, Oregon airport that says celebrating local farms and farm workers. I'm very, very proud of that. I'm sorry, it's just a tiny photo here but it, it exemplifies what's happening. Yeah, my interest in, in the border crossings started through the work on the agricultural panels and then just listening to NPR. I am an avid listener, listener and, um, and realizing that many people from Mexico, mothers and children who are trying to leave and come across to the United States for various reasons. Uh, for protection, for a better life, for their kids, and so on. And they were also being stopped at the border, and this was before the major, major border crossing. So early on, I began to use that and be aware and to create panels about that. This piece is Hungry for Hope, and that is kind of the story behind a lot of the work and the people I care about, a lot of the work that I do. It's that feeling of desperation, people striving very hard and not always able to achieve just the most humane, simple needs fulfilled and the sense of choice is, it's hungry for hope. And it's in the book and it's in your exhibit. Build bridges, not walls. Uh, caring about the fact that we can't stop people who are desperate. We have to make ways for them to move forward and for our society to accept those within our lives that are 
desperately needy and for us to have just better working conditions for people so they can take care of themselves. Nobody wants hands out. They want to take care of themselves. And certainly most of the migrants who've come here, who've crossed the border, really show us that. They care. This was the catalyst for a lot of anger on my part. And it was Melania Trump, the ex-president's wife, who went to the border to see the children and she wore a jacket that said, truly typical of the Trumps, I really don't care, do you? And my piece says, I really do care. These are kids, these are kids locked up in cages, separated from parents. We have the right to do this if we're a democracy. This piece is about people desperate to find a sense of freedom, desperate to come to the United States, desperate to be reunited with loved ones, with family, and in the process of crossing the desert, of going from Nogales, Mexico, let's say, to Nogales, Arizona, and then on to Tucson, lose their lives in the desert. It's a precarious place. Lack of water will do it. All kinds of insects and snakes, and just the desperateness of a journey that they don't really know. So there are remains, remains of human beings and people from the U.S. who care about these people, Samaritans who do a lot of good work um, and at feeding stations and leaving water uh, in the desert, but also when they find human remains, bones, uh, they, they make a note of the location and crosses are built to honor the spirit of that deceased person. So these are some of the experiences I had that led to uh, the drawings I made that are, that are the basis of this work and the books that I wrote. The caravans, the many, many caravans and the movement of people and the desperation. And uh, that's, that's it, the, the desperation of migrants between, between grieving and loss and hungry for hope. Once again, hungry for hope and the difficulty. So my work is symbolic. It's not at all realistic. You have to use your imagination. And it's not easy to see. I, my stories are not pleasant ones sometimes. My triples are more fun that I'm currently working on. You need to have some fun. But this is the basis of the exhibit that you have now at the Herb Memorial Union. And I am so, so delighted that lots of young people, faculty will see and hope they uh, care and uh, each of us in our own way do what we can to make life better for the DACA dreamers, for migrants all over.